But welcome back. Welcome back. All to right. the Zach Nichols podcast. Take a bump. Yeah. Drink a beer. <sighs> We're here for a little bit something different today. We are here for something different. Not a gangbang. No. We're talking about quite possibly one of the most regal experiences you'll find on national television these days. The traitors. What? The traitors. What a what an absolute treat. <laughs> it is fun. This show is awesome. I like it. And I think if you if you have half a half a brain sitting in your head, you have to look at this as a must watch because it's one of the I mean, listen, you're not gonna be able to see C T M Johnny Bananas on the same screen at the same time, same show very often in the future. It's we don't know if it's ever gonna happen again. And what you're really seeing is you're seeing in Traders is reality TV. It's like the reality TV Hall of Fame. Literally. Competing. It's unreal. Like you have Janelle. Mm -hmm. You have a, a, I mean, the heavyweight champion of the world. Literally the heavyweight, champ heavyweight champion of the world. Right. You have an Olympic swimmer. But more importantly, Janelle from Big Brother is a savage. Dan from Big Brother. I think we learned in that first episode He's there to play. And, like, I used to watch him, right? Like, I watched a couple of the Big Brother seasons, and I remember watching Dan and thinking, like, I wonder, like, if he's really, like, as cutthroat as he seems. Like, this scene, like, he takes it so serious, and, like, he came out swinging. He came out flat out. I came to be a traitor. He doesn't, he has it's no. It's not even about being a traitor. He potentially, like, like, what he, I mean, he came in, and he did exactly what anyone with a brain should have done. And he eliminated the right person first. And I do think that he's going to be a great trader, but I don't think he's going to be the best trader of all time. Now, this show is freaking amazing. I know I start to, I mean, Janelle, I'm excited to see her do some of these challenges. I'm excited to see Dan because I'm a big brother guy now. Mm -hmm. Josh made me a believer and Paulie really cemented it. But I really want to see the big brother people that we haven't seen on the challenge compete. And this is a, like, I mean, think about it. These people were in their prime back in the early 2000s. And that's what's beautiful about this era of television right now is we are seeing reality TV stars from our childhood come back and play as adults and almost get better with time. And dominate. Oh, dude. I mean, think about who's been running the show so far. It's been Dan, Janelle, and CT, in my opinion. Yeah. And Fedra. That's right. Fedra? I think it's, yeah, Fedra. Uh, Fe no, it's Fedra. I'm Fedra, sorry. Fedra, the other yeah. traitor. Yeah, and Fedra, she's been... Probably the most even keel person on the show with, you know, no one suspecting anything of her. Lo and behold, she's making these moves behind the scenes. She's a much better trader than than Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, and she's doing a good job of being inconspicuous and being a part of it. See, you almost as a trader, you have to go to the meetings at night. And then when you get back, you have to literally convince yourself that sh you're a faithful. You can't think I'm a traitor. You have to do everything like as if you're trying to, you have to convince yourself that you're trying to figure out who it is. It's got to be a huge, just absolute mind. Absolutely. And one thing. <laughs> oh gosh, I know something hot's coming. Something hot's coming down the barrel. Big, greasy barrel. You said, mind fuck, you got me. It's like on Peacock, but I think they can cause. Anyways. You can uh, bleep it out. We, that's what we have, we pay the producer for. Oh my gosh. No, that is what we pay the producer for. But what I was. Dude. What up? Just before you go, we have to put an asterisk by Trishel. Yeah, why? We got to. I just got to touch on that. Let's talk about it. Let's no first. Yeah, let's talk about Trishel. All right, she's insane, <laughs> but you know what? She's also like, I literally am like, okay, maybe Trishel or Asaf is the. For people who don't know, Asaf's insane, and he's on the challenge right now. Trishel would be who I would say is the female Asaf, or Asaf is the male Trishel. Like she's out there, dude. Like she doesn't remember things she says from one minute to the next. But she pulled an all-time challenge move where I think she didn't have a shield, right? She wanted the shield. But because she didn't get it, you know what she did? She literally made a target on Peppermint. Out of, out of thin air, Trishel basically convinced the whole house that she did something shady and then got Peppermint backpedaling into it to say she's a traitor, even though she wasn't. And I watched that, and I'm like, that is literally challenge move 101. You just get a name out there in people's mouths. That's and that's what Trishel did. And so I'm like, maybe Trishel took some time off after she was in Thailand and she reevaluated things and maybe she did come to play because that that was a big move. So you think that was legitimately planned and, and placed? I mean, if you watch the challenge, that's anytime you're getting ready to go to deliberation, as soon as a challenge is over, the first thing everyone tries to do is they try to just get let's get a name out there. 
any reason to say any name. And Trishel brings up some BS conversation, which meant nothing. Absolutely not. Because you could tell Peppermint was more so like probably thinking the same thing everyone thinks when Trishel talks is she's insane. And Trishel was probably like, uh oh, they don't like me. Time to create a target. Boom, did it. Executed move. Trishel is my MVP thus far. And she was able to do it with. She's your MVP thus far? Yeah. Yeah. For that move. I mean, for that episode. She was able to do it without making it an obvious thing that she might have been the traitor because somebody might have taken it as though hey you're a traitor you're putting attention on someone else but she was able to do it without any of that type of backlash and then had the wherewithal to fade back the next day so honestly like i have to like i was i mean i saw trishel was on there i was like oh i cannot wait to disrespect her and talk so much trash but then i watched and i'm like maybe trishel is the real deal now or maybe she always has been and maybe she just was kind of like on a mental vacation but like I kind of thought she was like, you know, like a golden girl. See, I don't remember her from the challenge, but the challenge fandom that's watching this is really going crazy for her. Tell me about... Uh, Dude, Trishel's like an all-timer. Her real world Las Vegas was one of the greatest seasons ever on um, when her real world. And then she just is like, Trishel's kind of like one of the biggest messes ever. Yeah. <laughs> and it's amazing to watch. Everyone loves a mess. I love a mess. That's what reality TV is about, and that is Trishel, and she personified that. She's a challenge champion, I believe. I think she might have won one back in the day when it was, like, summer camp, but she dated The Miz. Yeah. Oh, she's got she a hell of a Miz? She's got a hell of a track record. Who is the bigger mess, Trishel or Larsa Pippen? Dude, that's embarrassing. <laughs> like... The, all the memes and jokes and gifts where it's like another ring for the Pippin and Jordan duo. <laughs> How embarrassing. Jordan's not getting a ring in this one. No. Well, <laughs> a Jordan is. How embarrassing. It's actually insane. He was so, she was 16 when he was born. So that means like when his dad was playing, when they, so she married Scotty and after the 97 finals, right? Yep. I don't know how old Marcus was then, but. Let's say she was, I think she was 23 or 4, so she's 16. So he's like, let's say it's between 7 and 10. I bet she babysat him a time or two. <laughs> and uh, How like, do you do that? I, I, some people are just wired differently. How do, like, for him, I get it. <laughs> that fetish will wear off someday, and he'll look at her and be like, what was I thinking? Because I don't, like, is she an attractive older woman? Yes. But come on, dude. Like, how many years left? If you're it's like going Jordan, to a used car lot and getting the oldest, best-looking car <laughs> and thinking you're going to drive it into retirement. Getting the 98 Bentley and just being like, dude, I'm, I'm pimping right now. Yeah. <laughs> then 10 years later, dude, oh, my gosh. You're Marcus Jordan. You could be able to afford the 2023 Bentley. Why are you shopping for the 98 Bentley? I mean, is he basically signing off on not wanting kids? <laughs> no offense. No, but for real, dude. Like, <laughs> Maybe he don't mind being a stepdad. That's fine. I mean, yeah, the kids are his own age. It's like the, you know, for Christmas, he's like, hey, dude, like, let me give you some gas money. He's like, I make more than you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I literally like, make more I, than like, you. Like, you used to be my best friend. Like, I may, I know what you make. I make more than you. Like, dude. <laughs> I mean, you know That's Jordan hysterical. and Pippen have beef, right? I do know they have beef. I know it started from the last dance. Imagine if, like, MJ, like, Marcus was, like, getting ready to get kicked out of the family, and MJ's like, he's like, Dad, I need, I'll do anything. I'll do anything to get back on your good graces. He's like, anything? <laughs> He's like that long nosed mother Scotty got something for him. Yeah. You know, Larsa will fall for anything. Oh yeah. The, you know. No, if if, if Michael if it, made if a pass. It ha- if it's younger than her and has a pulse and a and a bank account, I feel like Larsa's in. Well, if it, if she's even if it's older than her and has a bigger bank account, yeah, thank God. she's in. Oh yeah, dude. Thank God for women like Larsa and Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you just threw Mariah into that. Dude, she's pissing me off, man. She is pissing you oh, off. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so she's a uh, swagger jacker. So tell me what you think about uh, the cast. Let's talk about some of the cast. Well, let, let's. I mean, is it is it just a chance that they bring Johnny Bananas on a season, and they bring in a redheaded nerd named Bergie? Yeah. <laughs> when Johnny's had a nemesis friendship slash hate love hate relationship with a guy named. Wes Bergman, who he affectionately called Bergie, and they bring that guy on. And I just, like, look at Johnny, and I'm like, I just would have loved to see when that guy introduced himself, a redhead, to Johnny as Bergie. Yeah, isn't he the How many too? jokes just started? Sp- like, Johnny was probably like a fire hydrant that got the top slapped off, you know, ripped off, and just, like, the jokes <laughs> just went. 
just nonstop jokes, 40 feet high. Like, Johnny probably never shut up about him being called Bergie for hours. He's probably still making jokes about that. <laughs> that is hysterical. But Bergie... Bergie's balled out in the cemetery, dog. Yeah, he did. He he held it down. He uh, you know orchestrated a lot of money. Got uh, retrieved. Yeah, thanks to Bergie. How do you think Bergie was like a bloodhound for those lights? I'm, there's no way I'm figuring that out <laughs> for sure. He figured out the track real quick. I would have literally just been running from them the whole time. I would have not even tried to do anything else. Just stay alive. Yeah. But anyways, no. So let's talk more about the cast. So we got Bergie. He's first up, right? Yep. We got Bergie. Um, His actual name is Carson Bergie. Bergeson, or actually Carson Carson Bergeson, he's from Love Island, USA. Why did they cast him to be on a dating show? We'll never know. <laughs> Why? Like, I was he? The, he was probably the like his house homie, maybe. Probably, yeah. Hey, G, uh, was did you see Bergie's season of Love Island or no? No, she didn't see it. That means he's. That, that means he was probably like a house plant, wasn't existent. Yeah. Then we have the challenge. The my in my opinion, the best challenger of all time, CT. Yep. And I think CT's. She, his style of the way he plays the challenge, I think, will be, is perfect for this game. I do too, and I think, like, obviously. And how do you know? How do you make? How do you make sense of anything someone says when you can't understand what they're saying because it's in a northeastern accent grumble? <laughs> G called it Batman talk. He sounds like Batman. <laughs> Dude, he's the man. He's he's like CT is a real. He will. He is a reality television titan. And he is a trailblazer, and he is one of the first to do it, and still the best to do He's it. He's not a real character. He's like someone that someone made up and put into the real world. Dude. <laughs> Done. They literally need, like, he is, I would, CT versus Wolverine, I pick CT. <laughs> what do you think are his chances? CT versus Andre the Giant, CT. Yeah, well, that's a that's a big one. CT versus Mike Tyson, CT. Right. I love it. <laughs> Always CT. He's my front runner. I'm going to put, if I had... If I had all the money in the world, I'm going to put it on him. I love it. I love it. So do you think he's going to be able to be – do you think he's going to be able to figure out who are the traders, or do you think he'll be recruited by the traders? I think eventually – I think the best – with the best possible scenario for CT would for would be for him to start out as not a trader and then get pulled over as a trader halfway or towards the end so that he gets to actually switch roles, and then it will really keep – you know, people guessing. Right. But CT's very smart. He's got an engineer's brain. And, I mean, he's going to dominate the challenges. Um, and, again, like, if you can't make sense of what someone's saying, how do you know if they're lying to you or not? For sure. Why do you think Deontay Wilder is here? I think Deontay Wilder just wants to have a good time. Yeah. What he does else? not need the money. He doesn't need the money. I just think he's there to, like, do something different. I mean, think about how fun that would be. Yeah, he had an, and like, would you rather play traders or get punched in the face? I'd rather play traders. <laughs> totally, he had an affection for uh, peppermint. That was kind of, kind of endearing. He's just like, man, I love peppermint. Yeah, I didn't get it. Yeah, I don't understand it either. Yeah, I don't mean. I mean, I th you know, I think you know, it just it probably was tough for everyone that like she got targeted so quickly because like she is, a, you know, she's trans and like she's there to represent her community in front of her community, and that's she had like that purpose going. Sure, and then to have that muted. Very quickly, I'm sure he just fell for her. You know. Yeah, for sure. The uh, I mean, dude, did you see the, his ring? No, I didn't. Oh, the is the, it the lion? The, that one, but the, his I, he has a ring. I don't know which ring. I think it's his. I don't know if he's married, but yeah, it's on a ring finger. I can't remember if it's right or left, and it's diamonds all the way around with a big diamond on top. And I couldn't look at any. I don't even remember what the scene was about. Don't know what he was talking about. I was just staring at that ring. I was like, that is the most impressive piece of jewelry I've ever seen in my life. No, you guys are literally you're prize that you're playing for is on his his finger right now that ring he had on his finger was more than the prize I mean. that dude is just there for fun he has to be or and his just check is to be there is huge yeah he's probably got a big check well that's why that's what's kind of crazy is like somebody like a deontay wilder who literally does not need the money he's not going to care about these little challenges for 20 grand he's not going to give no, a fuck he just wants to win he just wants to win and but that's why tough, he took dude. it harder that that girl left because like it's not about money for him yeah you're right it's about, and probably also, he's probably got a story to tell. He probably has some, you know, people he wants to represent. But my thing is, it's tough to go in there as a heavyweight champ because that automatically puts a target on your back. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know, though. Who knows? It's not really like a game that's super physical, you know? So moving on, we got Dan. Yeah, we got Dan. The Dan the man. man from Michigan. Yep. From Dearborn, Michigan. Coach football at St. Mary's. 
That's right, right down the road. Doesn't look like he ever played a down of football in his life. No, I think I can no take hate. him. No yeah. hate. I'll take him in a hall, bro. I'm going to beat him in a hall. I will break his legs in a post corner. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> can't cover. You can't uh, cover nickels. Yeah, you know, because those, Dan, those who can't, those who can't do, coach. Right. That's all. Those who can't coach, coach Jim. But Dan is a fierce competitor. We know that. He's proven it. He's one of the most, I mean, he was, his bi- a movie made on Big Brother was in the New York Times. The New York Times during his season of Big Brother, I believe, literally said it was the most strategic Big Brother play of all time. So they named him the number one Big Brother player of all time, and that says a lot. Wow, that does say a lot. It's a big legacy for to be number one. He plays well. hard. He sees. He plays. He he tries to see the game ahead of everyone. He tries to go steps ahead of everyone, and that's why I think he made the move by eliminating Bananas first. And I don't think Bananas should be upset about that. I think the only thing he should be upset about is the fact that he didn't go and get a shield. But I think he didn't get the shield t- because I think Johnny th- felt like if I don't get, go get the shield, people are going to think that I'm playing. It's going to present a more honest game. Like when you just go out there and go get the shield, like you're kind of trying to make a statement early. I think he should have. I think he should have realized that everyone knows that he's the best. Sh- he's the best. I wouldn't say he's the best strategist. I wouldn't say he's the best physical competitor. I think, I think that he is socially so inept and he can he's so socially in tune with everyone he can make everyone like him and i think he could he could can he could sell you air and i know dan probably looks at it like i've played however many games three or four games this dude has played 20 plus different games and won seven of them and ran in however many finals so that's you know it's just it's the best it was this it was literally the smartest move but unfortunately Everyone in the world that is watching the show that should be watching the show is missing out because it's he's literally the he is literally the greatest social player of all time on any reality television show. The only person I could think that would be close to Johnny would be Doctor Will, but Johnny's done it more, mm-hmm. and, and doing it more makes it harder because the more you do it, the more people see you do shady things, the more people see you make these moves. But what Johnny did on um, House of Villains was nothing less than a masterpiece he ran that house he worked it the whole time and then he literally got a lot of fans back by letting tanisha take the win because he could have sent tanisha in and then gone up i forget who it was the other person gone against them and easily won but by bringing tanisha there he knew that it was she was going to win and that move to me shows that johnny has a heart and if you screw him over though he doesn't and he will come get you hell or high water so dan you better hope you never do another show with Johnny Bananas because you won't you won't be on that set for longer than 30 seconds. And to that point, Dan, who's been out of the limelight for 10 years. That's a it, big move. It's easy for him to come back and be unsuspicious. But who does he take out? The guy who's never left the limelight for 20. Yeah, that was a huge move. And Dan needs to be given a lot of respect for that move because when a, when a big player, a big personality leaves – it creates a huge void in the house for people to fill. And so what Dan probably saw was like, Johnny's light years ahead of me in this social game, but if I get rid of him, it evens the playing field for me. Right. It's a move you respect as a competitor, but mm-hmm. you fucking hate as a viewer because you, we want Johnny there. He's perfect for this environment. Yes, this would have been, And he, Johnny brings so much comedic relief that, I mean, they're going to... They're, they're missing out. They're missing However, out. However, I am happy to see CT get a little bit of solo shine. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. You know, like he doesn't have to worry about always having to share the limelight with bananas and vice versa. And I think this is CT's CT's built for this game. Yeah, I love that. Do you think that Dan Giesling would not have came unless he was guaranteed to be a trader? I don't know if you can control that, but I, he's perfect for the job. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Dan's the type of guy who gets backed into a corner where you're like, yeah. He's toast. For sure. And Dan comes out of nowhere. So then next on the list, we got... Uh, his, bed, his We have Dan's big brother nemesis, Janelle. Now, I don't. I never watched the season, but tell me what you know about Janelle. I know that Janelle is... was. She's also a trailblazer. She was self-proclaimed. She said she had buxom and brains. Um, she's a, she is a big brother competition beast. She wins a lot of competitions. And what I do know about her is she's unapologetically herself especially on twitter and she i feel like she thinks she has a lot to prove 
I love the way she came out in this game. She's like, I am coming for myself. That's how I'm going to play at a social level. That's very, very smart. Cause someone that goes out for themselves is clearly a faithful. Well, I respect the fact that she loves playing the game, right? She's got kids. She's a cheer mom. She does all these things. She's a realtor, but like, her ability to come into this game and be like, nothing else matters besides how I do in this game, how I represent myself and my family, and her really going for it. I honestly wasn't a fan of her early when I watched the early Big Brother stuff, but, but like, I am now. I think that I like how hard she competes. I like how hard, you know, I really like the way how hard her and Rachel Riley compete. Absolutely. She's really smart. I think she's going to have a pretty easy time as things uh, progress finding out who some of the traders are. Well, she's outspoken. And I think she, I think she can, she's a good liar. She's a realtor. Obviously, she's a good liar. That, Is that, that associated with realty? I don't know, dude. Sometimes you, you see people, you're like, well, there's a crack on this foundation. Like, oh, that's so that uh, things can aerate better. And you're like, what? Like, like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like <laughs> realtors, the used car salesmen, minus Leon McAvoy. Um, Shout out to Leon. Yeah. Used car salesmen, politicians. All liars. All liars for sure. For the most part. But I, yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I just, I'm like excited to see how well she does. I only thing I think that she'll have a problem with is being a little bit too outspoken. And I think that she will eventually have a target on her back. Okay. What do you think about this politician? John Burko? What is it? Dude, I would be. Burko. How are you from going from British Parliament to an NBC reality TV show? I don't know, dude. He's a weirdo is weird he's like all like i like, give him credit for the effort though. like janelle's like you're like breathing weird and she's probably like because he's probably sitting next to you and he just can't even stand himself freaking crease she tried to call him out on it and he was just like I'm, that's just how i breathe yeah that's how i breathe he's like dude that guy he's gonna float along the whole time and we're just gonna have to sit there and just like deal with him yeah he took I'm a tumble. i'm not a big politician guy you know that yeah i know um what do we got to say about Kevin Kreider from Bling Empire. Never heard of him. Don't care if I ever... I hope that he just disappears. Because I have not... He's like, a, he's like a statue in the house. We don't even know what's going on with him. I have zero to say. We'll do it. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, we literally don't he's know. He's literally in a house full of people who are just like light years ahead of him. Just like socially. Oh, yeah. What did that. you think about that move with him and uh, him and Pilot Pete from The Bachelor? I mean, saying that they'll vote for each other. But it was so obvious. It was so obvious. <laughs> It's like once once the other guy voted for Peter, it's just like in a, you've obviously never been in a voting situation. It's like, dude, you guys are not going to come to breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> the traders are going to be like, we'll just get rid of these losers. <laughs> Bunch of, like they think they're doing like some like huge strategy and you're just like, you're burning votes, you morons. You've never, you've yeah. never done this. You have no but idea see, what you're that's doing. That's again, challengers have more opportunities to play these games. Absolutely. Um, all right. We talked about Larsa. And Jordan. She's a joke. What did you think about? She's Jordan? an absolute joke. <laughs> what did you think about Jordan getting eliminated right away? Kind of having a, you know, an eye on Dan Giesling, and he took him out immediately. Dude, Dan, Dan's a savage. Dude, listen, Dan's been back on reality TV for three hours, and he's eliminated Johnny Bananas and Michael Jordan's son. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's he's like the Eminem, the Kid Rock of reality TV. Coming in and kicking ass. Dude, he just, yeah, literally less than three hours. He's like, okay, the most, like, winningest guy ever on reality TV, you're done. Oh, wait, your dad's worth a billion dollars. See ya. Well, yeah. he's, he's like, the only person I think that he's shook by is Wilder, but he's like, this is just cool because it's like the Mike Tyson of this era. But, dude, Dan's, Dan's a savage. He is. Um, he's coming out hot. Who, I forgot who else was in that room. I think it might have been this guy, Maxim. There was only one other person in that room that could put two and two together where he basically said, like, you're being quiet. That's shady. The next night. Boom. We'll live. Yep. <laughs> Dan, dude, Dan's, he's cutthroat, dude. What do you think, think about them, their meetups, how they have the coats and everything? I mean, the it's, cloaks? it's dark. It is dark. You know, it's, but I think it also, I know what they're going for. We all know what they're going for. Merda. Yeah. yeah. That's what they're going for, you know? And it's, it's a production, too. Like, it's not. It's just a, it's a play. It's fun, dude. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a it's, lot of fun to watch. It's a play. If it's you're a, not watching it's a production. it, you're not fun. Yeah, no. And, I, and you're not coming to my my birthday party. Because <laughs> I only want to hang out with fun people. I only want to hang out with traders. Dude, I would I would want to be a trader. For sure. I think I'd be good at it. I think you'd be really good at it. If you were a trader in this house, let's say you were Dan Giesling, who was the first person you would go after? See, I don't know because I didn't have interactions with him. Got it. Um... But honestly, I might have gone for uh, 
I might have gone for the couple right away too. I probably would have gone for Marcus. I wouldn't have gone for Johnny because again, like the enemy you know is better than the one you don't know. Right. And that would be an advantage that you would have is hey, yeah. we know each other. We're not right. gonna we're not gonna go after each other right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would have probably gone for Marcus or Max yeah. from Dancing with the Stars. But see, the people from like Dancing with the Stars, Marcus Jordan, Larsa, like they haven't played this. I mean, they play it in their lives every day, I'm sure, but like they haven't played this game of deceit. So it's like Max is just like he just brought like he had no poker face, right? He was laughing because he knew someone was gonna go off on someone and then ended up making like you literally have to sit there blank face. Yeah, you he can't show emotion towards anything because he's laughing at it, thinking like this is reality TV and this is hilarious, but everyone else is watching him thinking, well, there was a reaction. Any reaction at this point, you know. Yeah, and it was really the claim that he was the Trader was very baseless, and it was funny. He kind of pulled the Horacio, like, dude, you guys are going to vote me in. Yeah. <laughs> like, you guys are really going to, like, me? Like, what the fuck did I yeah. do? He's like, I've just been hanging out. <laughs> yeah. Him and CT got into it real quick. Yeah, they had a little they they better, had an exchange. Yeah, you better watch out, dancing boy. He's going to smash your head and eat it. Yeah, not, not a good... Don't, uh, yeah, don't piss him off. Not, not a good uh, tree to it's bark like up. Getting in a fight with a garbage disposal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, next, we have MJ from Shaz of Sunset. I have no clue but i feel like she's getting she's mixing it up she is know? mixing it up she did a good job of of also sniffing out dan and staying on business i give okay i do give larsa credit and and mj for basically figuring out who the traitor was and trying to voice their opinion yeah but that you just couldn't playing. you couldn't galvanize the troops right they don't have like they don't they're not as convincing as some other people might be dan's so, convincing yeah is our dan's days numbered though since yeah. his name was said and yeah then, once your name is said you have to so he has to do something drastic every week now because once your name is mentioned people will fall back on that so now dan's biggest what i would think what i would have to do is every week you have to kind of do what trishel did make a smoke screen for someone else which is crazy like i i think trishel was just scared that they were just gonna vote her off because maybe she's not feeling like she's in the in crowd but it's like she did that. She executed it beautifully. She probably didn't have to, but like that's exactly what Dan's got to do. He's got to make sure someone does something stupid every single week moving forward. This is why I love Phaedra, is, and this is why she's my MVP, because one thing that you said earlier is how whenever you come back from being a trader, you have to realign your mind to yeah. say, I'm a faithful. What she's doing is because she's allowing Dan to make all the moves, in her head, she's not even making these moves. So her ability God, I didn't even to think about transition like that, yeah. to be a faithful is so easy because it's like, I'm not even doing that. Yeah, to make, you literally have to go into the house and pretend, not even pretend, like you actually have to convince yourself who is the traitor, yeah. even though it's you, you have to get that out of your head and you have to react like you're really looking. And I think I'd be able to do that. Mm -hmm. I think you'd be able to do it too. Yeah. Yeah. Like this guy, we, we texted a little bit, this guy, Deontay Wilder, no one would think he's the traitor right now because he's so passionate about his arguments about why some people could or might be. And it could be putting a target on your back if you're actually a traitor, but I don't know. I believe him, even though we know he's not, you have to be, you have to be involved enough. So people think you care but you have to be almost like anonymous enough so that you're not thrown. I mean, the last thing you'd want is to have a name come out of your mouth. The last thing you'd want, because then everyone's like, well, why are you doing that? What, that's the reason. So it's almost like you got to wait for someone else to do that and be like, oh, yeah, that does make sense. Hmm. But see, if that's not happening, then people are going to fall back on a name that was already said. So it's like a, have you ever driven a stick shift? Uh, I'm familiar with how. Okay. So you know when you get on a hill? Yeah. All right. Okay. And you can't, you're in park, right? Yep. And it's about, you're at a light and you're on a hill and you kind of got to play with the clutch and the gas and kind of like go a little bit forward and then it fall back. But if you give too much, you know, you're going to hit the car in front of you. You give too little, you're going to stall, stall. out. Yep. So that's kind of what this game is. Like you got to give enough to keep yourself in that same position in the game. But if you give too much, yeah. now you're that idiot that just rear-ended someone. But if you give too little... Now you just stalled out and everyone behind you is making like, what, what's going on with you? Why do you, why do you suck? Yeah. So I almost compared this game to like, you know, like driving a stick shift on a hill. Did you watch season one? I did. Okay. Is it against the rules for people, for traders to tell other people who are also traders? I don't know. And that was my question too. But if you watch season one, which I did, you will literally see the most perfect, flawless game played ever by Surrey Fields. Yes. Holy shit. I would have loved to watch that. I'm going to go watch it because her BB season, she did a, as good a job as she could have done. Oh, yeah, dude. She, she kept herself alive for weeks longer than anyone else because she's one of those people that she can check in and convince herself to live 
Like, I don't know what's going on. Dude, she was the most incredible. I mean, she played a flawless game. Like, she made the right move at the right time, and it ended up being perfect. It was it was very impressive to watch. And, and I could imagine she's exhausted. Traders won. Big brother. Like, all these things. Dude, she's – and she's a, a emergency room nurse. I will say, emergency room nurses are psychos. My sister's one. And I'm not saying a psycho in a bad way. But, like, my sister for a job. What do nurses make between 50 and, like, 100 grand? Somewhere, depending where you're at. Maybe more, maybe less. Some places. That's not enough to pick someone's uterus off the floor and sew it back into their body for me. No, it's not. No. At if, all. Like, she's like, oh, yeah, a guy came in and he had a hole through his shoulder. But you could see his heart pumping. I had to put my fingers in the hole to, like, plug something. And I'm like, and you're getting paid less than a politician. That doesn't make sense. So for me, to for an emergency room nurse, and here's the thing, while you're doing that stuff, I would pass out. I could imagine you'd probably be like, oh, like, you'd be freaking out. Like, that would amp you up. Emergency room nurses have to see these things and just straight face like, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, and just, all right, fix the problem. It's not. For they also have to deal with crazy drug addicts coming in and swinging at you, stabbing you with needles. Yeah, they're the calmest you know, of us. Insane makeout sessions. Emergency room nurses are the true frontline workers. They're the best of us. They are. They are the best so, of us. So Sari has been prepared for this without even knowing it. Plus, she's scary. Anyways, moving forward. So yeah, we don't season, know. We don't know anything more about MJ. So how about is it poverty? Is her name po like literally poverty? Poverty. Poverty. Okay, like a cheese. Yeah. So she has this great. I've never watched a lot of Survivor, but from what I've gathered, she has this great. Um, I guess vendetta with uh, the other girl. What's what's the other one's name? The other girl from her season, Sandra. Sandra. They had this huge like. It's like who's the queen of their season? Right. But Pavardi lost to her. But I think she's like a she's like a good she's a very good survivor player, but she's also a fan favorite. Like I think Sandra kind of gets like the villain role where like everyone likes Pavardi. I mean, if you're wearing those headbands in your hair in every scene, you have one in like every different color. You're it's America, a signature. You're America's favorite, right? You know, <laughs> right, like right. that's like when, when you have like a weird dorky like thing like that, like idiosyncrasy, and like you can get away with it it's because everyone loves you right and no one and you can tell she's got a very likable personality a lot of times people don't take those type of people seriously competitively but they just like them so would you have picked her to be a traitor no i wouldn't i mean i don't know her game so like that's something that it seemed like dan knew her game and what she would bring to the table yeah me personally no i would have went i mean i'm gonna go with the people that i know i would even went yeah, I, but... I i might take pilot pete just because just because it would be so unassuming and I don't know if he's good at it, but he obviously doesn't understand voting. But like his obliviousness, I think, would help me as another trader. Yeah, I'd be like, come on, like you'll get picked off. Yeah, I think their idea too was like she's gonna be kind of a shield too. Right, and I think that was more of their idea because one of I do believe that without knowing it, one of the traders, whether they like it or not, in the competition between the traders, and it's the person who figures this out first, is you have to put the other person in a position to be your shield. And that, if you can do that as a trader, you're going to win. Because as long as there's someone else who actually is a trader who has raised more suspicion than you, you're gold. And that's what Siri did so well. And that's kind of like where Dan's finding himself. It's like Phaedra has got me in the – she has him. So right now she's the most insulated. I would say Pavardi is kind of a little bit still on the outside, but she's in the transition. So she has that going for her. Because she's had authentic conversations with the mindset that I actually am a faithful. And then she gets to switch. So she has that advantage. So Dan is scrambling. Mm -hmm. And I think... I'm not ready for Dan to leave. So you better pick it up, Dan, even though this already was filmed. But. Yeah, Dan, Dan has to pick it up. Um, one thing that, that you said that is pretty profound is like... That's very Big Brother esque, which is I'm going to the I'm going to the jury with these people. Then I need the some I need like yeah. someone else to, the hierarchy to be yeah. once I get there to be a certain way. That's very very Big Brother style. Oh, it is. You have to literally get to the the end and make sure that there's another uh, traitor there that people suspect more than you. It is a that is one hell of a chess move to be able to do. And so being a traitor is like four-dimensional and i think being a faithful is three um i think being a faithful would be easier to get the end obviously because more of them make it but uh i don't know i think i'd be a good trader you think a trader is hard do you think it's harder to win as a trader 100 percent harder to win as a trader i don't know though because the way it is at the end it's like if there's one trader left or two traders left the traders will split it yeah so i don't know i i think that it depends on your game plan and again you also have to remember johnny is not the worst 
traders player of all time. Johnny very well could be one of the best. We just don't know it. He just got dealt a hand that was terrible. Had Johnny been a trader, I think that we would have seen some awesome things. The fact that he got eliminated, though, doesn't mean he's bad at the game. It just, like, again, it's all about the hand you're dealt. For sure. And the people that are there. And we see that in the challenge all the time where somebody, oh, 100%. somebody gets a one or two shots, they're gonna out in the first two eliminations or something like that, and then they'll make another run just because, hey, they got a bad hand or they had all the cards against them, whatever it may yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, uh, there was Peppermint, who we talked a little bit about. Uh, I don't think we got to see enough of her gameplay. I think that... I think that if you're not from a – so when, you, when you're when you from a, a competition show, you come into these things and you hit the ground running, right? You hit the ground and you're like, okay, I, I may or may not know the rules, but I still have had some conversations. I know that this is going to get started and it's going to heat up quick. When you're not from a, a competition show and you're more from like the lounging or like the making out kind of shows, you get there and you're like kind of in shell shock with all the personalities. And then before you realize it's a competition, people already started gaming. And that's kind of where I think Peppermint was. Because I think that, again, we don't see all the conversations, but I think when it's easy for people to say your name, you haven't, remember, relationship maintenance. You got to get around. You got to talk to everyone. You got to be in everyone's back of everyone's mind and at least have a, had a conversation with them. If you have nothing, they don't have it, and all they hear is your arguments at the round table. You're an easy name you're to smoked, say. Smoked. Smoked yeah, salmon. For sure. Um, so Pilot Pete is the next person on this list. So I watched this season of The Bachelor, um, and I saw him as a Bachelor contestant on The Bachelorette. Now... This guy is, he gets a lot of hate because basically he would like, he like told somebody he loved her and then he was still like sleeping around or whatever bullshit on the bachelor. But my point is, is yeah, he seems kind of spineless. He's spineless. Exactly. Yeah. He's spineless. He's harmless, but he's also spineless. Yeah. He was a guy that literally can't say no. That got put in the worst position to be in when you can't say no. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's a million girls that yeah. are dying to be with you. And are they really dying to be with him or are they just dying to win? Yeah. But that's, That's got to listen. I'm not built for the bachelor. <laughs> I watch it and we do are going to cover it up with go media, but um, it's one of those things where like you rarely find people that fall in love. Like very rarely. Oh yeah, dude. Come on. It's a bullshit show. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And don't they pay for the ring? And then if you stay married, you get to keep it. Yeah. Like, Neil Lane. Neil Lane shows up and he's like, here's this ring. Like, and they get to keep it. <laughs> they, oh, but I thought that if they don't make it, they got to give it back. No, I'm pretty sure if they, they get, I'm pretty sure they keep the ring. Yeah. Oh. Dude, I, I, could be I would wrong. pawn that off so fast. <laughs> so Phaedra, who is my favorite to win, I, I like her game a lot. You I think, think she's, she's going to win it? I do. I think she's very unassuming. You think she's better than my man, Christopher? Who? who, who Tamborello? Oh, CT? CT? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if she's the, better. I think she has more I think she has more influence, and I think she's going to do a great job of letting other people do all the work, and she'll be the last girl standing. Okay, well, she better, she better remain unassuming. But she better. But remember... She said she has a crush on CT. She does. So that means CT has the upper hand. I'm not surprised. <laughs> she did. She said she kept talking about how attractive Dude. her and or him and bananas were. You know what else I liked? How CT could care less about Marcus Jordan and Larsa. She's like, put two and two together. He's like, oh. But he had no idea. Yeah. CT is like in his own lane. He doesn't care. He does not care. He doesn't care so much that he started a fight with T.O. I can't wait. I hope, you know what would make CT literally the Goodyear blimp and every other reality television star, if he could do to T.O., or if he could do to Deontay Wilder what he did to T.O. And just make him crumble? Just, just. Mentally fold, fuck yeah. him up? Dude. You know that might be coming. I hope so. <laughs> that'd be awesome. I would, dude, literally. <sighs> yeah, that'd be funny. Swelling up thinking about it. <laughs> so Sandra. Six to midnight. Uh, so <laughs> hey, every yo. woman in America definitely signed up for peacock when they saw ct was on this season oh absolutely oh yeah and they they have to watch with a couple glasses a couple glasses deep cold water yep <laughs> yep and a, and a bag over their boyfriend's head <laughs> they definitely record it and watch it once he goes to bed for sure all right so sandra um she won survivor apparently um she, yeah, everyone's been talking she's a savage been, she's yeah. looks like a very intuitive young woman i would say like yeah, her, she, yes, she's won it, man. She's got the mental game. Physical game looks like it left her several years ago, but the mental game is there for her, you <laughs> for can sure. tell. Yeah, you don't need too much physical in this one. Um, all right, so. Speaking of physical, how about when Janelle booked it to get the life shield? Oh, yeah, she just went straight, straight back. Yeah, she's like, this challenge doesn't matter until I'm safe. And CT was in that boat with all those guys, too. He's like, whoop. We'll see you. Well, uh, yeah, he literally said that. Yeah. He was like, we'll see. We were those. Do you see how good he was at swimming? Oh, yeah. He was a torpedo. Yeah. Dude, 
crazy. And it's funny that you said that about Janelle. So Janelle, Janelle's I'm watching a, it. She's all about herself. She's it's awesome. It's the best. Like if I'm, her and Trishel don't get in a fight, I, I don't know. That's it's not real that's, TV. That's, that's got to happen. <laughs> yeah. Trishel's got to piss her off at some point. <laughs> so I'm watching it with my cousin Sam, who watched their Big Brother season, goes, dude, like you don't understand. This girl's a cop bees. And then um, how about how she fucking boxed out the, the uh, what's her name? Oh, we didn't even bring her up. The, uh, the Love Island girl. Yeah. What's her name? Mercedes Ekin Sue. or MJ. Yeah, G watches Love Island. Oh, Ekin Ekin Sue. Sue. Ekin Sue. Ekin Sue's kind of just like doing a good job though. Besides the fact that Janelle Charles Barkley for the freaking <laughs> boxed her out. Yeah, literally gave her the old hip. Put her ass on her hip. Yeah, dude. That was and she twisted. And then in the car, she's like, I mean, I was, like she acted like he was like, I'll have to call her out if she's gonna say I did anything. And it was like, dude, watch the film. <laughs> yeah, watch it. Watch the film you run our test. You <laughs> Jeez, you definitely did something. She to assaulted her. her. She did assault her. Yeah, dude. she gave her the business. That was, but that was assault and battery. She also, uh, Ekin Sue also lied about having her hand on the box. Like, no, you didn't. Like, you're a liar. So you did get your ass busted. Yeah, but you're also lying. And she like admitted as such at the round table. She's like, yeah, well, you were just aggressive and blah blah blah. And she's like, yeah, girl, like I was fucking there first. It, Janelle's literally like, welcome to the show. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like when you're at your in-laws' house, it's 8 a.m., you crack a beer, welcome to the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you wanted it, you got it. Yeah. Um, all right. La you said make yourself at home, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, I'm pretty Chanel sure. Chanel made herself quite at home. Yeah, real quick. Um, yeah. We got a couple more. We got uh, some housewives. We have one from Atlanta, which is Cherie, uh, Cherie I believe. Or uh, Yeah, I think it's Cherie. And then we also have Tamara um, from Orange County. So yeah, I don't know what they bring do. to the show. Tamara, Tamara has, you know, spoken up a little bit, but I don't know what they bring to the show. We're going to find out here soon. Yeah. You know, um, the real housewife, I forget her from last season. I think her name was Kate. Okay. She was just like a constant like target and she was constantly in the middle of all the drama. So I, I think that they are going to take a second to realize like what they're doing there. And then once they do and they lock in, I think they're going to be like, Let's go. Yeah. Um, and again, like I don't, I haven't watched a lot of those shows. By that, I mean I watch zero percent <laughs> of those shows. I don't watch Survivor, but I do like the way Survivor people compete in other competition shows. Absolutely, they've proven that they're tough, and, and they're, they're there to play. They're, they're there. there play. They're there to mix it up, you know. So, um, this vest is my official bid to be on Traders at some point. I think this vest would win the show individually by itself, but with me in it, I don't think there's a, even a competition. I think you would be awesome on Traders. I think you would absolutely win. If you do want Zach to be on Traders, make sure you comment, put Zach on Traders on this post. And <laughs> if on it films for less than three weeks, I'm in. You so you, and you're down to go on Traders? I don't know. I'm just joking. Maybe I would. I would I would love to play Traders. I just would have to. Again, the timing had to be right, but I think Traders would be a breath of fresh air from the challenge. I think that it would be I'd have to be a different game player because the challenge is great for people who are athletic and physically gifted because you always have that to fall back on. This would force me to lock into the social game and wear this vest every morning at breakfast. Yep. Dude, who wants to take a roundhouse kick from me while I'm wearing this? Oh, nobody. It's actually a funny story. I'll have a cup of co uh, coffee with you in that. Do you want to hear how I got this? I would love to know how you got that vest. All right, so I have wealthy grandparents. And you know how like wealthy people, like just one day they'll be like, I need a vest to wear like twice a year or whatever. So my grandma called and like they'll always call me and be like, hey, Zach, by the way, like we have this. Do you want it? I always say yes because like it makes them feel good. Even if I'm not going to use it, I know someone who can. Um, like one time she gave me like pink floral bathroom like rugs and stuff. I had them, you know, whatever. Um, so my grandma calls me. And she's like, hey, your grandpa bought a vest from I think I think like Scotland or England or something like that. So this is legit. And she's like, but uh, it doesn't fit him. And it's too much of a hassle to ship it back. So do you want it? And um, in my, I haven't even seen it yet. In my head, I'm like, a vest that my 88-year-old grandpa bought for himself. You think that it's going to, I mean, have you ever seen the way 88-year-olds dress? You know, my grandpa's got style, but like, again, it's different. You know, like I'm 36 and he's 88. So chances of you guys wearing the same in my thing head, and being like, cool on both of you yeah, is low. Very low. Like <laughs> almost as low as the Pistons winning a game for a minute there. Fuck you. But Anyways, so I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? I want to see my grandparents. I love spending time with them. And I get to go over there and hang out. So I'm like, I would love to see this vest. And I get there and we're talking to my grandma's like, you want to see the vest? And like, I didn't even think about it because like in my head, I'm like, I'm never gonna wear this thing. I walk around the corner and my grandma's like, this is it. And I was like, holy shit, grandpa. Jeez. 
You badass. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. When did you turn into how many, Jack? Yeah, how many girlfriends do you have? Where's the motorcycle? Do you have a motorcycle in the garage? Like, I was like, this is the coolest vest I've ever seen. Yes, I want that. Give it to me, please. This thing's amazing. How does it fit you like a glove immediately? Is your it's, grandpa a big guy? Oh, yeah. He's about 6'1". I mean, he's more. He weighs more than me. I know he's got a little. He's got a little bit of a grandpa belly, but it fits perfectly. Oh, dude! I mean, and you had flannels for days, so you're good. Yeah. The only problem is I don't like to wear this very often because I'm a married guy. I just the girls won't leave me alone. <laughs> no, for sure. Literally, dude. All the girls. I like, like, it's like I walk down the street, trail of women behind me in this yeah, thing. It's a magnet. Yeah, dude. So I have to only wear it at specific times. But I thought when we're talking about traders. This is this has to be the this is the jam. Oh, that is perfect for the woods of Scotland where this is taking place. The castle. Yeah, the castle. I, think I would be the Viking of Le Castle. <laughs> king of the castle. Yeah. King of the castle. But anyways, what I'm, do you think of the host? Ominous is, is shit. And I just you know what I like about him is he's obviously going for like a very intimidating role. He wants people to kind of be like, whoa. And then Johnny goes in there and clowns him yeah. and jokes around with him. And I I loved it. <laughs> yeah, loved it was it. hilarious. Yeah, no, I think he's a, I he's think hosting he's, real life clue. It's kind of cool. He's perfect for that role. I agree. It's really yeah. fun. Um, okay, guys. So obviously this wasn't too in depth. Uh, if we decide to continue with the traders um, full podcast, it will be more in depth. We're going to analyze every move meticulously, just like we do during the full ZMP pod. But it was fun to talk about, man. Yeah, it was fun. It was a breath of fresh air. Yeah, for sure. Make sure you guys uh, watch Peacock. Uh, I think Thursday nights it airs now after the Friday night. Uh, yeah. Premiere. So Thursday at nine, they uh, they blasted us. With three episodes, I was fired up about that. I know that was really awesome. Yeah. Great way to kick it off. I can't yeah. wait for tonight's episode. I, I'm like, it was, a snow, it was like a snowstorm. I had nothing else to do. I watched them all like ten times. Yeah, it's great. It was Cried great. when Johnny got sent home. Yeah, just waterworks, right? Dude, I was sad. Yeah, it was. All right. Well, we'll see you for this one. ZMP comes soon. Bye. That's my like. You know, they always talk about, oh, who's your like cartoon crush? Or like Pocahontas. Really? She's bad. Cartoon. <sighs> Dude. I don't know. <laughs> it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. I mean, Pocahontas. No, it's not. Pocahontas. When you're when you're like twelve years old. Yeah, years but Pocahontas, old. you could tell she was a smoke. Yeah, she was hot. You she know. was known to be a hot. hot. Well, dude, you know Lola, Lola Bunny. Well, here's the other thing. You know, Pocahontas had a bush. Oh, <laughs> you don't live in the forest and not own a forest. I don't think forests. I think forests were a thing until like maybe thirty years ago. It was probably the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, 30 years ago. Just, yeah, dude, serious. Whoa. 30 fucking years ago. Wow. <laughs> I was born in the 80s. Oh my. You're a geese, dude. You're a geezer. Grandpa. I'm a hot geezer. Oh, yeah. How's your New Year's you resolution well with going? It. Not happening. No? <laughs> no. I've lost nine pounds. Really? Yeah. Cutting it, dude. Yeah, I was. Challengers uh, would tell you you need to bulk up, though. I, I'm still heavier than all of them. I know. It's wild. Besides Fessy. I'm like 210 now. That's lean for you. Yeah. Compared to 240, but it's perfect. I think you're ready. I'm not. <laughs> I got Jenna. I got Jenna calling him Big Poppy Media. Big Poppy Media? Yeah. She's like, we on the phone. Were you on the phone with Big Poppy Media? I'm like, you better watch it. <laughs> right? Better watch I'm your the only poppy said, in this house. Yeah, I said, listen here, you beautiful. <laughs> you better watch your tongue. <laughs> Anyways. Dude, she knows about Big Media. Um, Are you on Patreon? No. You're not a subscriber? That's some bullshit. You get the live version. Yeah. People would pay to BG, but we have to pay her to BG. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe that? She won't just hang out with us. Out of the I bet half the time we're out here, we're laughing. We think we're the coolest people in the world. She's probably just like fidgeting with one of her things, and she's probably like these fucking idiots. No, that's actually exactly it. Yeah. So um, she just got back from vacation. Yeah. Geez. She's uh, nice and tan and toasty. What stays in Cancun comes home with you in Cancun. <laughs> all those, all those meals, all that tan, all of it. Um, all right, real just quick. Just hot dudes everywhere. Do just <laughs> raining men in Cancun. No. Well, you're engaged. Good answer. That was a test, and you passed. Uh, Wedding's still on. It's funny, yeah. <laughs> Wedding's still on.